Yes, okay, now we're talking about uh, my good friend, the mighty Bishop uh, Rance Allen and, and his decision uh, to sing with uh, 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 Snoop Dogg. And let me just say this. For those of you who have gone to your favorite scripture, judge not. <laughs> Matthew 7 and 1. And that's all you're talking about. You, you're being judgmental preacher. Well, listen, I don't know if he's still a crypt or not, but I know this. When Snoop Dogg was a crypt, you couldn't just join the gang. Your lifestyle had to change. The Crips wore blue. And to be a Crip, you had to separate yourself. You had to do what the Crips say. You had to wear the Crips colors. You had to prove that you were a Crip. You can't just be uh, a Crip. Now, isn't it amazing? Uh, but the requirement for the church, on the other hand, come as you are. I mean, we don't. We we have watered this thing down so that it doesn't even mean anything anymore to be a Christian. I mean, I'm going to talk about Tasha Cobb and her singing with Oh Mickey, and uh, 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 it's amazing how the gospel artists are so touched and so moved. And oh my Lord, you're so honored that racy, ungodly profanity lays godless entertainers want you to sing with them when you are holy people, righteous people. Uh, uh, Dorinda Clark Cole can just flat out preach. Preach, pray, and sing. Just do the whole thing. Uh, and so can her sister. And, and as far as I know, all of the Clark sisters can. They just got it like that. And their mother, oh my God, she's in heaven now. The great, late, great Maddie Moss Clark changed gospel music. Just, just class, 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 class. But back to this story now. Uh, I, I won't read the whole thing, but, but Bishop Allen thought that someone was playing a joke when they told him uh, Snoop Dogg wanted uh, him to sing with him. And like I said, I, I hope that you weren't so enamored by this man. Uh, and, 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 and if you read the article, it talks about all of the things that uh, Bishop Allen brought to gospel music with his style. And let me tell you, you're talking about an innovative style. This guy has a style and a way and a blend of genres uh, like no one else. And I loved every one of them. I mean, I'm a fan, and 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 uh, just think that the man, he, he's just got it. Which again is why I'm so disappointed. You you didn't you didn't you don't need a, a, a Snoop Dogg, um, and and I agree with you, Rance. A quote he has here. He says, "My music is always going to honor God. I'm going to give glory to God." And uh, and and I I really haven't heard a song that uh, Bishop Allen has ever sang that did not honor the God of the Bible. But I tell you what, a decision to sing with this man who has not by his lifestyle shown that he has given his heart to Jesus and denounced the former things of dishonesty, as the Bible says, uh, who after singing with you, uh, I don't know when the footage was, was recorded, but it was seen promoting marijuana, you know, uh, still cussing, still doing that kind of stuff. The decision, sir, to perform with him was not a decision that brings honor and glory to the God of the Bible. I was told by a friend of mine the other day that there are people saying on various radio stations that we're trying to bridge, build a bridge between the world and the church. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't teach that we're to build a bridge. The Bible says, come ye out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. No bridge. No bridge. Tell them to come to us. The Lord said to Jeremiah uh, in chapter 15 of Jeremiah, said, Thou shall, they shall come up to you. You will not go down to them. In fact, uh, Bishop Allen, uh, the Lord tells the prophet Jeremiah, I'm kind of getting, uh, let go, uh, this wasn't part of my prepared text, but let me find it right quick. Uh, the Lord tells Jeremiah that Jeremiah is supposed to separate the precious from the vile. This is Jeremiah chapter uh, 15. Jeremiah is complaining and the Lord says unto him in Jeremiah 15 and 19, therefore thus saith the Lord, if thou return, that is Jeremiah, 
Get yourself together. Then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vow, if you separate the precious from the vow, thou shalt be my mouth. And then he says this, uh, Bishop. He says, let them return unto thee, but return not thou unto them. Don't go down on their level. Bring them up to yours. Put a difference between what is precious and what is vile. Jesus died for Snoop Dogg, but Snoop Dogg, nor, nor does any other entertainer, has the, have the right, the power, nor the authority to rewrite how this thing works. If you're going to serve the Lord, you got to come on. No, none of us are perfect. We're all works in pro progress. I don't want to hear that garbage about, well, are you perfect? None of us are perfect. Um, uh, but we're, we're saved. We name the name of Christ and we're not trying to name the name of Christ and promote marijuana. We're not trying to name the name of Christ and promote uh, lacy, uh, profanity filled lyrics and things like that. Uh, 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 Bishop, the bishop talked about the, the, the musical influences that he's had in his life, the Bee Gees, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, Temptations, James Brown, Barry White, and others. And you hear those influences. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I think that, uh, I, I think Rance's music is just brilliant music. Uh, then he says, all of a sudden I hear it, the breeze and the wind. Uh, Snoop Dogg is giving his life to Jesus, uh, Alan recalls. You could have knocked me over with a feather. Uh, I, I said, why? I said, what? Why would you be knocked over with a feather, a feather if you hear that anybody has gotten saved? Jesus is greater. Calm down, Wooden. Did you hear the preacher trying to come out in? Jesus is greater than any rapper. If I hear that a rapper or an entertainer or an athlete or someone gives their heart to Jesus, I'm going to praise the Lord. They finally came to their senses. Jesus is King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. He's the lily of the valley, bright and morning star, the, the first and the last, the beginning and the ending. It is a privilege to know him. It, it's not a feather in Jesus's crown. If a rapper gives their heart to the Lord, it, it, it means to me that the rapper got some sense. I mean, what do you mean? You could have knocked me over with a feather. And, uh, and again, again, I ask, uh, what does... Uh, uh, what does it mean when it says Snoop Dogg is giving his life to Jesus Christ? I pray that Snoop Dogg gets saved. I pray that he is saved. But when you get it, you got to get it like the Bible says. You got to get it like Paul got it. You got to get it like the maniac of Gadara got it. Jesus says, now go back to the Decapolis and show them the differences that I've made in your life. Show them the great things that the Lord have done for thee and have had mercy on thee. He didn't go back still crying and cutting himself and crying out and cussing and that kind of a thing. No, he showed uh, the, the difference. Now, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, let me move right on, let me move right on. Time just goes so fast when I start talking about this stuff. That was a lady uh, who was following the Apostle Paul, chapter 16, Acts. The 16th verse says, it came to pass uh, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by her soothsaying. Her soothsaying was how she paid her bills. It was how she earned a living. Because you know now people are saying, well, that's my career. That's the way I make my money. So, all right, well, this lady made her money soothsaying uh, until Paul cast the devil out of her. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying these men are servants of the most high God which uh, show unto us the way of salvation and and this she did many days but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit I command thee in the name of Jesus come out of her and uh, and he came out of her that same hour now she had to change the truth is there was nothing theologically or in any other way wrong with what the girl was saying. The songs that the Clark sisters and Ranch Allen, Bishop Allen sing uh, with uh, Snoop Dogg may be a wonderful song, may be beautiful. I hadn't been interested enough to hear it. May be fantastic. That's not the point. The, the things that this girl was saying were not wrong. It was who was saying it. See, who endorses you matters. 
Who promotes the name of Jesus matters. Even when Israel were being brought out of Babylon and when God was setting them free and was telling them to flee, the Lord says in Isaiah 52 verse, uh, verse 11, talking about how Zion is going to escape, says, depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from this. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out uh, of the midst of her. Leave that place. But on your way out, uh, take the vessels of the Lord with you. But he says this, be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. You, you just anybody can't take the holy vessels. You got to be clean to go out and bear the vessels of the Lord. Well, Snoop Dogg's got to get clean. He's got to get clean. He's, he's, he's got to get clean. And then, then when he gets saved and denounced this other stuff, now we got something we can work with. Hey, I'd invite him and have him to come to the upper room and do his thing. And we would enjoy him and we can afford you. We would pay you to do your thing. But you got to be on the Lord's side all the way. You're not going to be here. And then the next time we see you, Smoking that stuff, man. You can't do that. Come on, come on, come on. And, and those of you who would try to disagree with this, shame on you. You know I'm right. Don't let fame cloud your theology. Don't let fame cloud your doctrine. You know good and well that when the Lord saves you, when you get saved, you come out. You know that. You, you've been saying it for years yourself until of late. Uh, I guess it's because, well, this is my friend and I stand by my friend and well, I'm just a friend and whatever. If it's my friend, I'm going to stand by my friend no matter what. I don't want you to be my friend. A good friend, the Bible t teaches, uh, Proverbs says that a wound of a friend can be trusted. I want a friend who would tell me, Wooden, you're wrong there, buddy. Don't do that. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good for you. It's not good for the body of Christ. It's not good for your family. Is it good? For the body of Christ, for young men and young ladies who have just got saved and we're trying to get them off of Snoop Dogg's music. We're trying to get them off of Mickey uh, Minaj music. We're trying to separate them from uh, Jay-Z. Is it good for these people now to hear, to see legends singing with these people? Uh, that I'm, I'm told, I don't know, that Snoop Dogg, at the time of this airing, his, his album is, I think it's Snoop Dogg and Friends, I don't know what the name of it is, is number one. Okay, well, Snoop Dogg's audience has always been bigger than a gospel audience anyway. And I'm sure his fans have bought his music. It stands the reason that he would, stands the reason. And, you know, uh, in most churches today, let's be honest, most churches don't even preach doctrine anymore. Most churches today, the, the popular pastors, they teach on relationships and they talk about being transparent. And the guy gets up and talk about what him and his wife did the other day. And that there's no Bible. And, 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 and if they do read the Bible, they, it's a little, they give it uh, lip service and put the Bible down. And you walk across with no Bible in your hand. Many churches, the podium, they, they don't have room for you to even place your Bible on the podium anymore. So we don't know the doctrine. We don't know what we believe. So, so many of you who have problems with what I'm saying, I understand because you, you don't actually know what the Bible says. You're not even encouraged to read your Bibles. You may be encouraged to read portions of it, but, but you don't read your Bible. Uh, you know, you, you, you're encouraged to read Deuteronomy where it says, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, bless your going, bless your going, bless your coming. You know, those kinds of things. You're not encouraged to study in context. You, as a matter of fact, you both, we don't go to a church where there's a whole lot of do's and don'ts and thou shalt and thou shalt not. We just go and we just enjoy the Lord and the Lord blesses us and praise the Lord. We just love each other and that's it. We don't have any kind of judgments. No, ju We're not judgmental. We just love you where you are because you know you got to meet people where they are and uh, come as you are, stay as you are. We're going to meet you where you are. That's the problem. That's the problem because we don't know the doctrine. We don't know what we believe. And when you don't know what you believe, I, uh, Stephen Wonder said that. He says, if you believe in a thing that you don't understand, it'll make you suffer. Superstition ain't the way. <laughs> I understand this. And there is no Bible for what Kim Burrell is doing. Kim is at it again, talking about her angel numbers. Stay, stay tuned.